Hey, it's your girl, Carmel Jean-Francois, owner and founder of Seafit Coaching. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another installment of the Sugar Savvy Solution, acclimating the foodie in you to a life beyond sugar. So today I have a special treat. I was reviewing this video that I recorded eight months ago. It's actually an interview. Larissa Harrington interviewed me. She actually invited me into one of her private programs and um, I was the guest speaker. And we spoke a little bit about what else but sugar addiction, the different signs of sugar addiction. And we also spoke about the different healing modalities and healing techniques. Because as we know, there's a lot more to healing than the kale that we put at the end of our forks and how many squats that we do. I say that all the time. So I would love for you to give this a listen and hopefully you find some gems in this video that you had not heard before, or hopefully it reinforces re-emphasizes what you may already know or something that I have might already said. So give this a listen. Hello everyone and welcome to today's masterclass where we are going to be talking about signs of sugar addiction and what we can do about it. And so I'm here with my friend and colleague, Carmel Jean-Francois. Is that I say that correctly? Yes. Uh, going back to my days of studying French. Okay. Um, so hi, everybody. Um, I was really excited when Larissa asked me to come on and, and speak to you all. Now, I'm Carmel Jean-Francois. You said that perfectly, Larissa. And my jam is fitness, my, my jam. And so it was fitness for a long time. And um, and when I saw that there was a problem with the, I, I was always working out, but I didn't look the way I wanted to look. So I started, I sought out the help of a nutritionist. That nutritionist asked me if I did any type of calorie counting. And I did not want to be that person that counted calories, but I hired her and I got really good at looking at a piece of food and knowing exactly the how, how many calories that was. Although I don't do it anymore, and I strongly urge my clients not to do it, what it did was give me like nutrition 101. It gave me the basic fundamentals of, of um, the how nutrient dense a broccoli is versus a candy bar. <laughs> it's not hard to tell, but it did give me an idea of where everything fell on the spectrum. But what I started finding is that because I was calorie counting, everything that I was eating was processed. Everything came out of a box. It came out of a bag. It came out of a pot package because that made it easier for me to count calories. And so what I did was I kept calories low, protein high. That's all I cared about. That means I was very high with, um, with protein shakes, protein bars, protein powders, and all of that is laden with sugar. What it did was give me like nutrition 101. It gave me the basic fundamental, the, how nutrient dense a broccoli is versus a candy bar. <laughs> it's not hard to tell, but it did give me an idea of where everything fell on the spectrum. And I have a joke about my name because my name is Carmel. I say my mother named me Carmel and she cursed me with the sweet tooth. And I was named after my mother and my mother had a sweet tooth. And I believe that my fundamental love of sweets come from my mother because she loved sweets. She did not deny her children of sweets. We were, everything we had was sweet. Um, but I'm an adult now, so I can't blame it on mom. Right. And then I found myself as I as my sugar intake increased, I, I started getting a, a lower tolerance. Like I was just kind of like, OK, that wasn't enough to satisfy my sweet tooth. I need more and I need more and I need more. And pretty soon I became a coffee drinker. I was never a coffee drinker, but I was only taking in coffee just so I can have in my sugar. So I basically was taking sugar and milk with a splash of coffee. And when I started realizing that I was actually addicted to sugar was when I started hiding the amount of sugar I was putting into my coffee. When somebody asked me, how many coffee, how many sugars do you take with that caramel? I would give them like three. I mean, mean no, knowing that I needed at least four or five more, four, more, four or five more packets of sugar. That's when I said, what's, what's happening with me here? What's happening with me? constantly fatigued. So that's another way, right? I was always tired, even if I was consuming so much caffeine during the course of the day, and it wasn't just one cup of coffee. By noon, I was ready for another one. Then by mid-afternoon, crashing, I'm like, oh, 
I can go for another cup of coffee. And another cup of coffee just simply meant I could go for some more sugar with a splash of coffee. And then I remember but by the time I realized it was a problem, I was having a third cup of coffee before I even went home. And I was always so tired and lethargic and sleepy that coffee never kept me up at night. And not to say that it didn't affect my sleep, and I'm sure that was part of the reason why I was always so tired because there was so much sugar and caffeine in my body. I never had a problem sleeping, um, but I was always tired. So what what gives, right? Um, and another thing was, constantly eating and thinking about food, even when I was not hungry. Now, the surprising fact about it is that when it comes to sugar and food addictions, um, certain people you look at and they might be a little bit overweight, they might be a lot overweight. And you look at them and you think, huh, I know they're probably addicted to sugar. They don't know how to say no to, 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 to food or sugar or candy. You see the way I look now? I look pretty much the same way that you see now. I was just heavy into fitness, but my diet was all sugar. So no, I had nobody judging me. I had nobody judging me. And if I took a piece of cake and then a second and then a third piece of cake, people would say, come on, you don't do that every day. I'm like, yeah, exactly. But I knew that I did. I knew that I did. And I knew that that was a secret, right? So these were, these were signs. I didn't even realize what was happening. I didn't realize that there was even such a thing as sugar addiction. I used to call it sugar addiction and laugh about it because everybody around me was just so forgiving. But what was happening inside? I was training a group of people and, and they, their diets consisted of a lot of sugar, but they didn't look like me, right? They were the heavier ones that I said, huh, all right, I'm gonna do a sugar detox, 30 day sugar detox with everybody. And in reading the symptoms and the signs, guys, that's when I realized this is me. Everything I was reading, the cravings, that's me. The hiding, that's me. The fatigue, wait, that's me. The the the, the feelings of anxiety, any anything emotional that I was feeling, I sugar needed to accompany it, right? Whether I was happy about it, whether I was sad about it. Even craving salty foods to kind of balance off all the sugar that I was taking. I realized at that point that, oh my God, Carmel, this is you. And I dared not tell anybody. I coached them. And still, I just kind of like tried to wean myself off and everything like that. But sugar still called my name. Um, and about two years ago, again, I looked just like this. My doctor diagnosed me as pre-diabetic. And it made sense to me. I wasn't shocked. I wasn't surprised. I just said, okay. And around that time, I started hearing a lot of talk about whole, being whole food plant-based. So I decided to dive in and whether one had to do with the other, I'm not sure, but it was, it was an independent thought. I said, let me be, let me just go a whole food plant-based for a week and see what the big hoopla is about. And I felt like, I felt great. And I did, I tried it again for another week. I felt great just around the time that I got this diagnosis. The doctor wanted me to come in for another blood test. It, it was a couple of things that she diagnosed me with high cholesterol, pre-diabetic and a fatty, fatty liver. So when I went back in two weeks later, guys, two weeks later, she says, what, what happened? Um, were you an alcoholic? What was going on? And I said, no, I just, I just changed my diet. I'm a whole food plant-based vegan now. And I was only two weeks in and she had nothing to offer me. She didn't really comment. She was just like, okay, see you at the next checkup. But I say that to say during those two weeks, at one point, maybe about a week and a half in, I looked up and said, Carmel, you haven't had one piece of chocolate in two weeks. You haven't had any cra like cravings for any candy. I surprised my surprised and shocked myself. I just inundated my system with the natural sugars and fiber and nutrition from from plants that I really weaned myself off of that those cravings. Now, don't get me wrong, <laughs> I wasn't healed. It was it. I was far from it. The sugar still call my name 100%. Do I still feel like there's underlying um, things that I have not resolved? Yes, I do. But the point of it is that I've been able to manage it in a very healthy way and a way that I really feel um, I really feel aligned with my journey. I, I, I managed it in a way that I never thought would happen. When I decided to become whole food plant-based, I did it out on a whim. And I did it to really go back to my doctor and say, ha ha, I don't have fatty liver disease. And, and what I came out saying, 
I, I, I get this sugar thing now. So those are a few of the signs that I saw in myself. Yeah, Carmel, I just want to pop on and say thank you for sharing all of that, because I do think that a lot of times we're overlooking the symptoms or we're just noticing like one of like, oh, maybe I'm fatigued, but not connecting the dots of all of the other things that we might also be feeling as well. Or right, what you're talking about with the, the calorie counting or following basic food pyramid or doctor saying, hey, eat this. And you're right. It's so much easier to pay attention when something has uh, the nutrition label on it. And right, we're not yeah. paying attention to how our body is actually processing it or what our body actually needs, which is why we focus so much on the mindfulness aspect of paying attention mm-hmm. to those signs that our body is giving us that perhaps something needs to change. All right. And I see here um, somebody shared of the drinking coffee to get sugar resonates. Right. I think I, somebody said, I think I do that. And I share all the time, like the only coffee I like is coffee gelato because I agree that (laughs) I don't actually like the taste of coffee. It's the (laughs) the sugar and cream with it. And uh, if I drink coffee, it would just be to have to have the the sweetness and the sugar. Yeah, I don't know how people actually enjoy black coffee, but anyways. <laughs> right, I don't get that either. And when I, I just decide- don't drink it because I don't like it unless it has a lot of stuff. Right. In it. Yeah. So as um, Carmel, as you're talking about some of these signs of sugar, whether it's addiction or dependency or cravings, whatever it is, um, what is it that we can do about it? That once if someone notices, oh, you know what? I am feeling like maybe I'm addicted to sugar. What do we do? Well, Larissa, back to that mindful piece that you that you mention often. It's um starting to be mindful of when it is that that sugar craving hits. Um, <clears throat> what we might be doing? Did something trigger it? Am I being emotional right now, or is it just is it, is it just a reaction to just reach for it because it's there? I found that the a lot because I like sugar so much. It was always around me. So it was always just so easy to reach. And once I, once I started practicing that mindful piece, even the um, intermittent fasting, I found myself reaching when I wasn't even craving anything, but simply because it was there. So it's being mindful of how much of it is around you, um, how much of it is emotional, how much of it is, is a social aspect, or is there trauma attached to it? And uh, some of it is very, very surface, right? Just like reaching for it. And some of it, you might have to dig down a little deeper to kind of say, where did this come from? When we consume sugar, there's a very real chemical reaction that happens in our body. Our brain lights up, we get the dopamine hit. So there's the emotional, there's the chemical um, aspect of the sugar addiction. Uh, So all of those things. No, I think what you're talking about is important. And again, for anyone, who's here live, if you want to put a question in the chat um, of like what we do once we recognize that it can be a problem or it is already a problem, whether it's just in our everyday life of things we're noticing or whether a doctor is diagnosing us with something like in your case where you already, you already noticed it, but the doctor had to say, Hey, um, you can't keep going on this way. Right. Right. So you're talking about the nostalgic piece, the emotional piece, um, actually what's happening in the body what, around uh, cravings with sugar. So how how can someone tell the difference? Um, someone can. I, I feel like once we do start paying attention, we can tell the difference very, very easily. And I think that's the main thing, the loss of control um, and to even admit it to yourself. It's honesty. It's honestly because I think we all have a, a a sense of awareness of what's going on in our bodies and how we consume food and and drink and how uh, how well we sleep or how moody we get because there's also a behavioral aspect to all of this as well. Um, if I'm if I get anxious because it's time to eat and I haven't eaten eaten and sugar and food are so closely related. So to know the difference is to, is to really just have an awareness and have some, and being honest with yourself. Are you hiding something or or are you blatantly making excuses and puns and jokes about how you eat? So I think those those are some good ways, Larissa. 
Yeah. And what um, one of the things I also just want to hit back on, Carmel, is what you're talking about with the additives, where some of it is a blatant, like, you know, you're going and getting dessert every day. And for me, years ago, when I started, you know, on this sugar journey of just awareness, I was astonished at how much sugar was in everyday things because we were already eating, you know, all organic mostly fresh foods, but things in, you know, ketchup or sauces or all of these other things that a lot of people just aren't aware of. Right. So I think it's so important when we're talking about the mindfulness piece, the mindfulness around our own thoughts, emotions, belief, memories, all of the stuff that comes up, right? Paying attention when we have a craving, when we're habitually just grabbing something, but then also the educational piece as far as really being aware of what we're ingesting, what are we consuming that maybe we're not even paying attention to? Because it's one thing if you're making your own coffee and you know you're putting in, you know, eight packets of sugar, right? right? Some level of awareness, but a lot of times right. you're eating things and not recognizing that they love it so much because it's filled with either sugar or artificial things. And um, I know we didn't want to get make this too heavy today, we're just raising awareness for people and hopefully giving them some tips of things that they can do differently, but really having that awareness and still practicing the self-compassion and the grace and kindness, if any of this is resonating, that we don't need to beat ourselves up or feel bad about choices that we've made in the past or that we're currently making. It's just awareness. And then sometimes knowing that we need to work on something different than what we thought we needed to. Yeah. Right. Sometimes it's like, oh, I'm going to work with a dietitian who will tell me eat these foods or, you know, all these prepackaged health plans now of like this exact amount of calories. And maybe that's not the exact support that someone needs. So being right. honest with ourselves mm -hmm. to say, oh, you know what? It is an emotional thing. It is bringing back, you know, memories from my mom and maybe there's some grief and trauma connected there and maybe that's what I need to work on mm -hmm. or maybe I do need new ideas of how to integrate whole foods plant-based whole foods into my diet because I just don't know because I didn't grow up in that way right right that's another thing that people just like oh, okay what what does one have to do with the other you're telling me eat plants and I'm not going to have a sugar craving anymore and and like we don't understand the correlation so there's a bit of education that goes in there too and sometimes we won't understand what it is that we need and that's exactly why I went with that dietitian I didn't understand what I needed so and I ended up learning how to count, count calories so healing could look very very differently depending on the person and depending on what their history with the addiction is. Yeah. And I think that's so important when we think about healing and nutrition, that there is no one size fits all approach. Like for me, I get frustrated seeing diet or nutrition ads or like the exact foods that you need to eat to, you know, lose weight or boost energy or any of those things. And why I feel like it just needs to always go back to mindfulness because what is healthy for you or what makes you feel good or what your body can process and uh, you can use for fuel could be different than mine. And then that also creates so much shame and really just practicing mindfulness of, hmm, how do I feel when I eat? This? Yeah. Right. And I think that's key. I think that's the bottom of it because Larissa, there are so many different types of healing modalities. Maybe it's just energy work, right? Maybe it's just meditation too. And I don't say just in that that's all, but maybe maybe it's a cocktail of different healing modalities that's needed to actually um, help heal. And, this, and that's the beauty of it, right? Because just like with the food, it's no one size fits all. The healing, the, what the healing looks like, it, it's not gonna be one size fits all. And, and that's when we know and can appreciate that we are unique. And yeah, what does what worked for Carmel didn't work for me, but this is what works for me. Yeah. And knowing that even if you have figured it out <clears throat> and one day you do have cake or coffee with cream and sugar, that you don't need to feel like a failure and it's okay. And we're still just practicing mindfulness and self-compassion and grace because a lot of people, they're like, oh, I'm only going to eat this way. And then they don't for one day and then they feel like a failure and they just stop with doing what was already working for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree 100%. Because it's the moment to moment. So 
okay, you did have a piece of cake for breakfast. It doesn't mean the whole day is ruined. And right now you can still choose to make a different choice. Yes, yes, 100%, 100%. <laughs> wow. And then there's, and then there's a, I was just going to say, as far as eating is concerned, <clears throat> there is a few things that, just a couple of things that I wanted to share. I always, always tell my clients, add more plants to your plates, add more plants to your plates. And by plants, of course, I mean the fruits, vegetables, the legumes, the nuts and seeds, you know, things like that. <clears throat> Fiber, fiber is so super key. Um, there's a school of thought that if you juice your fruit, you're good. But when you juice your fruits, you are getting rid of all the other um, beneficial nutrients, like the fiber that comes in our fruits. And we need that. That actually helps, um, uh, that actually keeps the sugar from spiking in our blood and making it become a problem. So we need the fiber and the other nutrients. Um, and it and taking uh, more proteins, whatever that looks like for you, just being aware and mindful, just like what you were saying, Marissa. Mm -hmm. Drink yeah. a lot of water. Drink water. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. Like, what final tips do you have for people listening in of things they can be more mindful about? So mm -hmm. that was awesome. Anything else you want to share? Um, I'm sure there is. And when I get off, I'm going to be like, darn, I should have shared that. But there's <laughs> nothing else right now. I do, I do want to say that this was, Larissa, this was just so good. I just felt so like in my zen, because usually I'm like yelling at my clients. I'm like, in a very loving way, in a very loving way. I'm just like, get it together. <laughs> But um, this was just kind of like really So sad, again, so I hope you enjoyed <laughs> those clips that I had to share with you. I hope you took some valuable information from it. Remember, healing looks very, very different for everybody. Whether you decide to go whole food plant-based or whether you decide meditation is your route, it is your choice and whatever it is, it's right for you because there's always a growing process here. There's always a growing process. Ultimately, what I would love for you to do is just be more savvy about your sugar. So with that said, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit that notification. So every time that I come on, you're notified and you know exactly when it is that I'm on. And also share this out to somebody that you feel might benefit from this information or just might be interested in hearing what we have to say here on this channel. I appreciate each and every one of you and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.